it. So our wings should be aligned at 90 degrees to the fuselage and the cans are making sure everything stays level while the glue sets up, Gorilla Glue sets up, and then we'll be on to the next step. So if you were careful while you were doing the spackling and sanding, you were able to transfer that center line mark. Just keep transferring it from layer to layer. Um, and so now I'm going to connect that mark to the vertical on the motor mount with my flexible ruler. And then that is going to be the center line to attach the vertical stabilizer. The owner of this plane is going to need a servo extension. And so I'll let him do whatever he wants with the end of it. Um, and I braided the majority of the wire. Since this servo and wire is going to be traveling next to the power wires, the ESC, and the motor. So hopefully that'll, you know, eliminate any twitching of the servo or anything like that. Here I'm just reusing a canopy template that I've used on other planes. It's the perfect size, it's a great shape, so I'm going to use that. Um, when I cut in to the foam, I'm going to cut in at an angle so the canopy can't just fall through. It'll naturally just sit perfectly right on top, and then I'll add some supports to lock it in. But yeah, simple. Okay, so clearly pre-hollowing is the key to getting this canopy out. You absolutely could not cut the canopy out if you didn't pre-hollow. If you didn't have this area for the blade to slice all the way through, if the foam was connected down in here, uh, you'd never get the canopy out. So you definitely do need to pre-hollow it. And looking at the thickness, uh, we definitely didn't overdo the pre-hollowing. We've got a lot more foam to cut away, and that'll save us some weight. Yeah, this wall is just way too thick. You know, we can cut it, cut it down by a good half inch at least. So that's perfect. And I will start hollowing out the fuselage or mount the fin, whichever. Uh, I'll probably mount the fin. And then while that's drying, I'll start hollowing out the fuselage. So mostly through trial and error, we've got a pretty decent um, contour of the bottom of the fin with the fuselage. Uh, that's going to get filled in with goop. I could go with Gorilla Glue to do better gap filling, but I really don't want the fin to let go in case the plane were to like flip on landing or something like that. And that's just too little surface area, I think, for Gorilla Glue to handle. So I'm going to go with goop on that and then we'll add a fillet and fiberglass and that will be a completed fin section. Okay, so the goop holding the fin in place has cured. Um, now I'm going to add a goop spackle fillet around the fin to create some nice airflow, fill in the gaps. Uh, I'll let that cure for probably at least 12 hours, and then I'll add a little bit of fiberglass with the thin goop mixture. So that's next, all right? So I noticed when Graugans was sitting on the bench that it was always leaning to the left. So I verified that the about 10 grams in the right wing tip would uh, get the plane to balance level on both sides. Um, so I'm going to add a quarter and two dimes to the right wing tip. And I'm just going to slice a little, a little pocket in the right wing tip, put in the coins, goop it, and then since I have not fiberglass the wing yet, um, I will just let that cure and then fiberglass the wing and you'll never know it's there except for now that I told you that it's there. So I don't know if it was a variation in foam density or more Gorilla Glue on one side than the other or whatever, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna fix that and then it should fly. So after thinking about it for a minute while I was putting in the coins, uh, I'm almost sure that the, probably the difference in the wings was a difference in the balsa density for the Elevons. Uh, I think that's far more likely that the balsa was different than the density of the foam was different. 
because you know the the wings were cut from a single solid block of foam so it's unlikely that that was the cause so yeah all right so now we have a flat platform to mount the gopro you can see we have about an eighth of an inch um, on each side and you can also see that the camera um, sticks out right here from the profile of the fuselage and that's just going to create a little unnecessary drag so i'm going to add some foam in here and then i'm going to sand it to shape and add the spackle goop mixture and then I'm going to put fiberglass over that. No need for Kevlar because it's not a strength component. So I'm just going to fare, fare that GoPro in nicely so that it doesn't have these drag pockets behind it. And you know, it won't go whistling by. It'll still be a pretty quiet airplane. Okay, so we have some fairings uh, gooped, on, gooped on and pinned in place while the goop sets. And then I'm going to uh, carefully contour them to the GoPro and fill it in with the goop spackle mixture and then fiberglass it. Here you can see I've marked out a happy little NACA duct on the front of the canopy. I don't really have a formula for this, uh, just make sure it's in front of the battery and the electronics to get airflow over those. It's an inch wide and about an inch and a half long. And then I've marked out a hole for the exit. Uh, the cooling air exit okay and you can kind of get an idea of where that is on the fuselage so basically i'm drawing air in from in front of the electronics and i'm exiting the air from behind the electronics uh, this one i'm going to cut out with a razor blade and i'll show you that one when i'm done this one i'm going to cut through the kevlar i'm just going to pierce the kevlar with the razor blade and then i'm going to take a soldering iron and shove it up there and melt the foam Make sure you have ventilation and you are wearing respiration when you do that. The fumes that come off of EPP when you melt it are nasty. So yeah, look out for that. You can see what I was able to do with the X-Acto blade in the foam. So that's kind of what you're going for. And then you can kind of see the exit hole down there at the bottom. I did clean that up a little bit with the razor after I did the opening with the soldering iron. So yeah, that's that. Mm -hmm.